Choking, in one way or another, is a huge part of golf. Well, to be fair, you see it happening a lot in every sport, but for now, let's stick to golf, shall we? Almost every golf tournament ever has had a winner who failed to win and a winner who wasn't really supposed to win. So stay tuned as we look at the biggest chokes in golf history in today's video. Let's start with the king of chokes, Greg Norman. So the thing with Norman is that his name is almost synonymous with choking. Seriously, we're not talking one or two great chokes here and there. We're talking a whole career sprinkled with chokes. Chokes. He's topped the choke charts, and we don't think anyone's going to beat him anytime soon. In the 1996 Masters, Nick Faldo was six strokes behind Greg Norman as they began the final round. Norman most likely only needed to shoot even par to claim the green jacket, but instead he came crashing down in the saddest way, shooting a final round 78 against Faldo's superb 67. Ouch indeed. Nobody had ever lost such a lead. Surely Faldo couldn't catch Greg. Vandeveld handed us the greatest hole choke in golf history back in 1999, and Norman gave us the most spectacular single round choke. Next, John Cook at the 1992 Open Championship. Honestly, this one was such a bummer to watch. Nobody saw it coming. It happened at Murfield, where John Cook was in the lead by two strokes with two holes remaining. The man wanted to build on his lead at the par 5 17th, but guess what? He missed a two-foot birdie attempt and then bogeyed hole 18 to lose to Faldo. Now for Scott Hoke at the 1989 Masters. Hoke the choke. Is there anything left to say? If we're being real, Hoke's last name isn't the only reason he belongs on this list. The Masters would have been Hoke's if he had made a two-foot putt. He had just one more putt to make to win the event, and that was his third of the day. He actually left a lengthier putt to prolong the playoff with Faldo, which he made. Unfortunately, Faldo's tournament ending shot on that hole only made Hoke's misery worse. So here's what this guy did. He missed a two-foot par putt on the opening hole in a playoff match with Faldo. Sigh. He'd have won it if it wasn't for that miss. Faldo sank a 25-foot birdie putt on the second playoff hole to win. We might have been a bit more likely to forget his three-putt from inside of 10 feet during the 1987 PGA Championship if he'd made that putt. Man, he would have qualified for the playoff with a two-putt. Moving on to T.C. Chen at the 1985 U.S. Open. You'll probably see many missed short putts, as well as duffs and shanks in golf. That's just a thing. But what you probably won't see is a double hit. Yes, it does happen, but it's more of a once-in-a-blue moon type of thing. You probably wouldn't expect to see it coming from a player who was in the lead after 54 holes of a U.S. Open, but that's exactly what he pulled. It looked as though Chen had everything under control in the 1985 U.S. Open at Oakland Hills west of Detroit. After all, he did have a four-shot lead after four holes, but then he went on to make an eight at the fifth hole after double-hitting a chip out of the rough. For those of you who aren't familiar with the rules of golf, you must count both strokes when you double-hit a ball. This was a big price to pay, as it led Chen to ultimately lose a playoff match against the eventual champion Andy North by one stroke. His name was once a proper noun, but is now only a noun. Double hitting a ball is usually referred to as pulling a chin. Oh, what a tremendous effort. Will he fought to... It's also a joke that the TC stands for two chips. It's a sad way to be remembered, but it's what most people think of when they hear Chen's name. Up next, Jean Vandeveld. Similar to TC Chen, Vandeveld's name has changed from being a proper noun to a noun. He could have won the competition with just a double bogey on the last hole. By the time he got to that green, he needed to sink a good putt to secure a spot alongside Justin Leonard and Paul Lawry in the playoff. Lawry defeated Vandeveld and Leonard by three strokes in the four hole playoff. To be fair to Vandeveld, the Carnoustie 18th hole is a challenging hole. Patrick Harrington suffered the same fate in 2007, but he won in the next playoff. Vandeveld was literally a one-shot pony, unlike any other golfer on this list, perhaps with Chen's exception. He was Cinderella's glass slipper that cracked one hole too soon. The process was pretty simple. I knew I could miss a fairway even with an iron. Uh, just because of the of the wind condition, so therefore I thought, you know, if I hit driver, at least I'm going to be 60 yards. Choking is basically an adjective that describes him. You've likely heard someone at some point say, this tournament's his unless he pulls a Vandeveld, or something similar. It was just that massive a choke. Now on to Doug Sanders. Doug Sanders has finished second at all four of the main tournaments. He placed in the top 10 in every major in 1966. Despite this, he has no notable victories to his name. The most well-known collapse, which put him on this list, occurred in the 1970 British Open. On the 18th hole, Sanders' tee shot came within 74 yards of the pin, all but guaranteeing a par. He would have even won the title if he'd made it. Sanders was under a little more pressure due to a poor approach shot, but he still looked solid. He then lag putted to a distance of three feet, giving himself a side hill putt to clinch the title. Jack Nicklaus beat Sanders in an 18-hole playoff the next day when Sanders missed the putt. And this is what people dream about, that you've got this one. 
with a left hand. He's well known for a variety of things now, more than 40 years later. Unfortunately for him, that putt is what people will remember the most. Sanders joked that he doesn't think about the putt all the time anymore. In fact, he can go four or five minutes without thinking about it. Still, he gave us one of the biggest collapses in the tournament's history. Let's move on to Colin Montgomery. Montgomery will be remembered for a lot of good stuff. He's a successful Ryder Cup captain, one of the greatest European Tour players ever, and one of the greatest Ryder Cup players ever, among other things. Sadly, despite having his opportunities, he's never claimed a major title or a victory in a U.S. competition. In an 18-hole playoff against Ernie Els and Lauren Roberts in 1994, who both shot 74, he fired a 78. He was defeated by Steve Elkington in a sudden-death playoff in the 1995 PGA Championship, but Elkington's performance was more impressive than Montgomery's. Montgomery followed a first-round 65 with a 76 in round two of the 1997 U.S. Open. He was in contention the entire weekend, but L's one-shot victory came after he bogeyed the 71st hole. Who didn't win the 2006 U.S. Open will be remembered more than who did. It was only Jeff Ogilvy left standing. On the 72nd hole, Montgomery made a double bogey before Mickelson did the same thing, but he did it from the middle of the fairway. Ball drawn in it. This is a great shot if it's the right distance. No. After switching clubs, Montgomery admittedly hit one of his worst strokes ever, leaving himself short and to the right of the green. He missed his bogey putt that would have forced a playoff and failed to make the par that would have won him the championship. When most golf fans hear his name, good comments come to their mind, but sadly, so do his failures. Now for Kenny Perry. Perry and Montgomery have a similar track record, except Perry is less accomplished. He's won a lot, especially since turning 40, but his failures are just unforgettable. The 1996 PGA Championship was held at Valhalla in Perry's hometown. Kentucky. Perry skipped practice after his bogey on the last hole and instead walked to the broadcast booth. He tied for second place in the competition with Mark Brooks, who defeated Perry on the first playoff hole. The next time Perry found himself in serious contention for a major was the 2009 Masters. There, he nearly aced the 16th hole. He then made a birdie putt to extend his advantage to two shots with two left to play. Sadly, he then went on to make consecutive bogeys and finally bogeyed the second playoff hole too. That was the hole on which Angel Cabrera won the competition. Lastly, we have Phil Mickelson's truly legendary choke. It's impossible to forget the U.S. Open choke. Sure, Phil has done other weird things, such as missing a three-foot putt on the 71st hole of the 2004 U.S. Open, but the stunt he pulled at winged foot in 2006 was the most painful to watch. As Mickelson stood on the 18th hole at winged foot, he only needed a par to win his first U.S. Open and third consecutive major. Instead, he shot a double bogey to hand Jeff Ogilvy the trophy. I'm such an idiot, he said later on. Well, bro, we kind of agree. That's a wrap for this video. Which one's your favorite choke of all time? Let us know in the comments below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. See you in the next one.